Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Lathing with Vince. But really, we're gonna have a fun little project today with the Tormach 8L lathe. It uh, will be a simple little part with some ID boring and threading. And I don't have a lot of experience with that, so I thought this would be a great project to brush back up on it and uh, show you guys how it works. Turn and burn, baby. You're not always gonna know what you have to machine, so. I thought it'd be best to start this project with just a random nut and bolt. I measured the diameter of the threads and then I used a thread gauge and the bolt ended up being a one and a quarter seven. So that was easy to drop in Fusion. And then after that, I was able to see the size of stock I needed. So I prepped a few pieces of stock in the bandsaw at an inch and a half in diameter and an inch and a half long. Our stock size was pretty large. So I chose to install the three jaw chuck. That also meant that I had to switch the machine to the low belt position and change the setup in the controller. Next, I clamped the stock in the three jaw chuck and then lightly touch the face off with the right hand facing tool. I didn't have to be that accurate because I was taking a 20 thou off the face. I ran that tool path at a constant surface speed of 200 SFM with a maximum spindle speed of 2500. And that's the maximum you're gonna get for the low belt on the 8L. My feed per rev was two thou, and that may sound low to some, but cutting dry with this insert, that range makes for a very nice shiny surface finish. Perfect for facing. With the part faced, it was time to drill a hole so that we'd have a starting hole for our boring bar to slide right in. I used a plain 3 8 drill at a spindle speed of around 1500 for a surface speed of 150 feet per minute, around 6 inches per minute for my plunge feed rate, for a feed per rev of around 4 thou. And I found that 4 thou is a great starting point for drills like this. You can definitely push harder with this machine, but because I was running dry, 4 thou ran really well for me and still broke a nice chip. All right, now it's time to talk about the boring bar and the setup a little bit more. The 3 8 boring bar that comes in the kit is four inches long, but due to the forces for boring, you wanna keep that bar as short as possible so you don't have that, uh, you know, acting just like a springboard, causing chatter in the bore. With this tool, the minimum bore diameter that I found was 440 thou. So realistically, you're probably not gonna be boring nice accurate holes under half an inch. For under that size, probably better to go with the drill and ream strategy. To start the cut, I used a profile roughing toolpath with the mode set to inside profiling. I used a constant surface speed of 250 feet per minute with a maximum spindle speed of again 2500 RPM. My cutting feed per rev was a little high at 5 thou, but I found that it broke a nice chip and due to the axial forces of this type of toolpath, the tool didn't have a problem. For the passes, my maximum depth of cut was 32 thou and I left stock to leave of 7 thou on the walls. To finish the bore, I used a profile finishing toolpath with the mode again set to inside profile. I used a surface speed of 200 SFM with a feed per rev of 3 thou. I also added a spring pass. So one thing that did happen was I did spin a tool. Maybe I didn't tighten it enough, but the way that that holder works is that it has a split collar that tightens around the tool. Due to how much surface area that that boring bar has because it has flats machined into it, it didn't hold well enough. So I decided to fix the issue, designed a set screw that would be able to be screwed into the holder and locate the flat on the tool. This would also help align the angle of the tool. Here's the finish of that bore tool path. And while our main goal is an on point diameter, a nice surface finish definitely doesn't hurt. Because the one and a quarter seven thread was so deep, actually 90 thou, I had to step up my tool to a half inch Shars ID thread tool. For the cam, I split the thread into two different sections, a roughing and a finished tool path. I ran the machine at 180 RPM, which is the minimum the 8L can run on the low setting. Better safe than sorry. And because I was cutting dry, I didn't need to have a lot of speed. I took a total of 12 step downs for a 90 thou thread depth overall. That equals out to about seven and a half thou per step, which doesn't sound like much, but the deeper that tool cuts, the more engagement it's gonna have. And for cutting threads, I don't go for maximum material removal rate. When surface finish is the most important thing, usually one or two extra passes won't hurt. I have found that using the alternate flanking in feed mode usually helps reduce the amount of burrs that threading can sometimes push. For the finish pass, I came in with the same feeds and speeds and ran a full depth pass with a spring pass. I actually added on one more thou of thread depth because there isn't a stock to leave section for the threading. So you just make the depth a little bit deeper and that's 
basically your uh, negative or positive stock to leave. All right, so there you go. Pretty simple process from start to finish, even with that one and a quarter seven weird thread. It was easy to dial in and pretty straightforward in cam. I was also very happy with the results. Well guys, thanks for watching. I enjoyed making the video and stay tuned for the next one.